In our video learning session, we will be learning about the concept of under constraint, fully constraint and over constraint. We will apply this and we will try to understand how to keep fully constraint geometries, understand also different type of geometric constraint and we will configure settings for applying constraint automatically and additional geometric constraint for sketches also we will be learning. We will view and delete geometric constraint and animate fully constraint sketch and also we will be understanding dimensional constraint of different class and we will measure the distance values between objects in our sketch and also we will measure the angle between the entities. If you talk about constraining the sketch, how can you define the constraining something the rules which governs or which controls orientation and position of the sketch that is nothing but you control the degree of freedom which the sketch is having. After applying this geometric constraint you also need additional dimensional constraint to make your sketch fully constant. If you broadly discuss about the concept of constraining is classified into following three different categories. Under constraint is something where you have free degree of freedom of the sketch and you apply some more constraint to do is fully constant and over constant is something which is some surplus dimension or constraints are applied which you need to delete. If you see the under constraint sketch which is having the degree of freedom and is not completely fixed and is having some dimensional freedom or maybe geometrical freedom. But in case of a fully constant, you can see all the proper dimension are assigned and you can directly control the orientation and the position whenever required because you have the specific control over the sketch which will be looking in our example. And if you see over constant, the additional constraints which are applied need to be deleted. And if you see the degree of freedom concept, if you open any sketch directly you can visualize and you can see the degree of freedom which you have in your sketch. So let us discuss this in a broad sense and broad scenario. If you see this is the constraint, if you click this constraint you can see the sketch is fully constant. Suppose I will be deleting one dimension and here also one dimension and you go for constraint you can see the sketch need two constant because you have here this symbol the degree of freedom. Once you apply the dimensional constraint over this then you can directly see that how you can control the dimensional orientation directly I am going to this still one more is required. Let us say I will be going to horizontal. Now you can see the sketch is fully constant because this is the reference line which you cannot use. And also you can directly estimate the degree of freedom and its orientation. Once you click this there is no further arrows. If I am deleting this particular icon you can see you have the one constant missing which is under constant and now once you apply the dimensions of the vertical this will be fully constant and further if you apply certain dimensions then this will be over constant. Let us say I will be assigning one angular constant here then you can see this is over constant. So under constant, over constant and the proper constraining which are required need to be followed properly to use this concept properly. And what are the types of constant which will be using that how to understand. 
So when you select your drawing object and you press C constraint, then constraint dialog box will be shown here. And if you not select anything and you type the constraint, when you select the drawing pairs and you go for constraint, you can see the constraint toolbar. Just like that here you have the dimensional constraint also. You can apply the radius, angular property, parallel property, perpendicular and so on. These are the different constant, fixed constant you can use to fix the direction and fully fixed controls the complete degree of freedom where you have the rigid structure. Horizontal constant locks the horizontal orientation and vertical, vertical orientation and coincident joins two point and point on curve aligns the point over the drawing object and midpoint constant aligns the point to the midpoint and parallel constant makes to line or drawing object collinear with respect to the parallelism and perpendicular constant makes to drawing object in 90 degrees orientation and equal length constant makes the length or the arc segment equal and tangency constant you can apply to control the tangency over the object and equal radius also you can apply to control the radius factor and concentric constant, collinear constant, constant length constant, constant angle constant, slope of the curve, uniform scale and these are some advanced drawing constant. If you try to understand the various cases like selecting the end point of the first and the second entity, you can get the pair of options. For example, to better understand this, I will show you a couple of examples. I'll go to sketch, I'll go to orient and we have two different lines. This is the line number one and this is the line number two. When I select the end point up to this line, I'll go for constant C and I'll click this end point and this end point, you can see the coincident is applied. Just like that, this will be the resulting output. Just like that, if you apply over the line and the circular curve object also the same scenario can be best understood. We have one circular object and we have one linear object which is openly placed. I will go for C and I will select this end point and this periphery and here also you can see this is attached. Now if you move this drawing object you can see this is attached to this one. So in this way you can apply various principle of constant to understand it's working and this is parallel if you see these are the two lines if you after applying parallel they will be parallel and this is perpendicular when you go for the parallel go to constant C and click this and this and you can see here couple of options where you can say select parallel just like that if you select the perpendicularity between this and this and you want the perpendicularity, this line will be in the perpendicular orientation. Just like that, the tangency you can test over this two pair and concentric also in the same way. And auto constant does a great job which automatically applies the selected constant. So how to apply the auto constant, that we we'll look into. If you go to add button direct sketch, here you have options to control this. You can see auto constant and auto dimension. So if you go to auto constraint, you will be having that options added, this option. And you can select the required criteria which you need to filter and you need to apply. Once you select the sketch, this all point will be applied. For example, if I have selected one, created one rectangle, let us say, and I am selecting this and deleting all the constant, right click remove all constant. Here you can see all these are splitted. There is no relation between this. Now I am going to auto constant and I am selecting the curves and I am applying this. Once you apply this, all this property will be applied to this one. 
and coincident I have not applied. So if we apply the coincident filter here, and you select this, apply this, now you cannot move this out of this because this is joined, joined automatically. And parallel property, perpendicular, everything property which are selected are controlled directly by selecting this. So this is one of the very fundamental principle which you can apply through auto method and no need to apply independently. Whatever the options you need to filter out, you can do it. You can show the constant and you can hide the constant also. You can see here, you have all the filters and controlling options so that you can show and hide the constant as well. Show the constant and hide the constant. You can see the constant, you can hide the constant. So all this, no constant with all constant you can filter out. You can remove and you can list out constant also. The right click and you can remove constant. And constant type drop down list are there so that you can include and exclude the constant as well. So these are some quick uh, understanding about how to apply over the sketch. Converting a sketch entity to reference entity. If you have a sketch entity, you can convert that to reference entity as well. Let us say this is my sketch. I need to convert it to axis. Right click and go to reference convert to reference, this will be converted to instantly reference. Just like that you have the dimension constant where you can apply the aligned linear and other dimensions. For example, if you want to apply over this line, let us say go to this dimension, maybe aligned or horizontal or vertical, all this you can apply whichever you need. So these are the dimension constant. You can apply the parallel dimensions as well over the two edges. So this is the parallel dimension and perpendicular dimension is applied to this between this line and this. So this type of conditions you can apply to control the geometries through the dimension constant as we can control through the positioning constant as well. Just like that you can set the angle, you can select the pairs and you can create the angle as well. For example, if I would like to apply the angular constant. You go to this and go to angular dimension, this and this, you can assign it. And let us say this is 60. Just like that you can apply the radius and you can apply the perimeter also for calculating the length. And then you can animate the constant dimension also, how it is shown. For example, I will show this. If you need to constant this, and if you test this angular functions for animating, you can directly do the animation. I will switch on the animation control animate dimension and once you do the animate dimension here you select the corresponding dimension which you need to control lower limit is how much lower limit is suppose 90 and upper limit is 180 and you can apply this and this you can see the animation can directly be seen by using the constant and you can control also the steps so I'm just going to stop and I'm controlling the step to 50 that will be more smoother Just like that, you can control this between certain degrees also. You can see negative values of animation limits are currently not supported. I am going for 0. 0 to that particular angle will be animated and will be shown. Measuring the distance values between the object in a sketch, this also you can do. So directly you can measure the distance between the sketch. You can define the start point and you can define the end point and you can do the measurements. For example, 
if you'd like to apply this go to analysis measure distance and you can measure the distance between this point to this point and if you go to the correct measurement you can see this directly for example if i'll go to analysis measure distance i want the starting point as this and ending point as this this is not showing because this end point is not shown here so what to do is you can do a point filter here let us say the first point i'll be assigning over this point and the second point i'll be assigning over this point then you can see the distance is measured properly because the automatic snap does the disturbance just like that if i need this as my first point and this as my second point or maybe this as my second point this you can do the controlling so this can be done for all the sketches to know the distance also you can measure the distance between projected concept also you can have the projection option where you can have the control because when the two lines and objects are not in the same plane this also we have seen you can measure the length of the arc as well you can directly go to analysis measure distance and here you can go to the length and you can measure the length as well you can measure the angle in 3d form also between the entity in case of 2d what is the angle between this object that also can be shown here let us say i'll be measuring the distance radius and projected concept just like that i can measure also the angle between the objects you can see the 3d angle or the true angle between this so these are some quick uh, controls which you can use to test the dimensions and measurements let us apply this principle over the projects in our coming video lecture session thank you